Here are the top stories for today, September 11, 2020. Malacanang is optimistic that the economy will recover after hitting rock bottom amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The Interagency Task Force approves a proposal to increase ridership in public transportation. The palace dismisses claims by a human rights group that drug-related killings increased during the pandemic. And hotels slashed their rates in a promo for frontliners and tourists. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Malacanang is more optimistic of the country's recovery as economy starts to reopen. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the Philippine economy may have hit rock bottom after months of lockdowns, but we can always look at the bright side since the worst had already happened. The recent social weather station survey show that about 40% of Filipinos expect the economy to worsen in the next 12 months due to COVID-19 pandemic. 24% expected it to stay the same and 30% expected it to improve in the next 12 months. So, naiintindihan po natin kung bakit pessimistic ang ating mga kababayan. Pero, ang sinasabi naman po ng mga economic managers, we have hit rock bottom. And the only way to go is up. So, kapit-bisig po tayo. Hanap buhay po tayo lahat. Bubuksan po natin ang ekonomiya. Nandiyan pa rin po si COVID. Pero kaya po natin pag-ingatan ang ating mga sarili. At sama-sama po tayong babaman muli. Malacanang respects the decision of the Cebu provincial government to stop supplying dolomite sand being used for the beach nourishment project at the portion of Manila Bay shoreline. This after Cebu's governor, Gwen Garcia, issued a cease and desist order against two mining companies for transporting dolomite, saying the provincial government of Cebu and municipality of Alcoy were not informed of the beautification project in Manila Bay. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the solution to the issue is for the provincial government of Cebu and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources to open their lines of communication. Kung meron po silang mga concerns, makipag-ugnayan lang kay Secretary Simato dahil hindi naman pong ibang tao na si Secretary Simato. Nung nagka-problema po ang siyudad ng Cebu, si Secretary Simato rin naman po tumulo. Sa tingin ko po, buksan lang ang lines of communication. Sa tingin ko po, di have DNR naman ang project proponent dyan at wala nang iba. Lahat po ng provisyon ng batas ay nasunod pero susunod din sila doon sa sinasabi ng LG ng local government code na kinakailangan yung patuloy na pagsupply ng dolomite ay uh, merong pagpayag ng lokal na pamahalaan. Meanwhile, DNR assures that engineering interventions are being applied in the Manila Bay Beach Nourishment Project to protect and prevent erosion or washing out of the crushed dolomite boulders in the area. DENR Undersecretary Benny Antiporda says geotextile tubes are being installed in the area parallel to the sea wall of the Manila Bay to prevent erosion of the white sand or the crushed dolomite boulders. He admitted though that whatever development applied or done in Manila Bay can be affected by calamities such as storm surges. The Department of Health already made a clarificatory statement about the implication of laying out dolomites at the shore of Manila Bay. It says dolomite in its bulk state is not a known health hazard and that dolomite in dust form like any other dust particle can lead to symptoms such as chest discomfort, shortness of breath and coughing for this is our body's normal reaction to irritants. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno de Magoso thanked the national government for the rehabilitation and beautification of the Manila Bay shoreline. De Magoso said, Beach Nourishment Project of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DNR in a portion of Manila Bay shoreline will attract more tourists and investors and will create more jobs for the people. In our news roundup, Makati City is hiring medical professionals and other healthcare workers to curb the local transmission of COVID-19. What are the available positions? Janice Cave has the story. Makati Mayor Abigail Binay announced that the local government is hiring physicians, nurses, medical technologists, midwives, and nursing attendants. Apart from monthly basic salaries, hired applicants will receive a personal economic relief allowance, hazard pay, COVID-19 hazard pay or subsistence allowance during enhanced community quarantine and laundry allowance. Healthcare workers may also receive annual benefits from the local government. 
Interested healthcare professionals may send their applications through email via mhd underscore main at yahoo.com. In Quezon City, the Raise to Zero campaign provides cash incentives to barangays with the highest number of identified probable and suspected COVID-19 cases and lowest number of confirmed cases. Outstanding barangays will receive 200,000 pesos, 100,000 pesos, and 50,000 pesos depending on the number of their population. Data collection started last September 7 and will end on September 14. The campaign is said to motivate barangays to intensify their search for probable, suspect, and confirmed virus cases and to sustain the drop in the number of daily cases in the city. In Marikina City, the local government is reconfiguring the setup within the city's offices, workplaces, establishments, and other facilities as part of the new normal. These include proper ventilation, physical distancing measures, and imposing minimum health standards. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Residents of Butuan City are urging one another to strictly follow the minimum health protocols to contain the spread of infection due to COVID-19. Local transmission cases in Caraga region now rise to 237. Doreen Mariel Rosales of the Philippine Information Agency, Caraga, filed this report. Residents of Butuan City are now filled with worry over the continuous rise of local transmission cases of COVID-19. For Patrick Senieres, a resident of Barangay Libertad, the active implementation of containment strategies in the city is unquestionable. But he says there seems to be a lack of obedience from the residents, which is why cases continue to rise. Maganda naman yung implementation, pero ang mali lang yung sa mga tao mismo na hindi talaga sila sumusunod sa mga quarantine protocols na ginagawa ng government natin. As of September 8, of the 234 cases linked with the virus's local transmission in the region, majority or 223 of these are from Butuan City. Others appeal to their fellow residents to follow the minimum health protocol implemented. Binantayo na tana sila mag-igmat sa ilang gaugalingon para dili na modaghan gusamot ang local transmission ba. Hindi uh, lang magbintayon sa atong kaubanan ng uh, atong gaugalingon nga nga naanam na siya dapat kita mismo mag-ignay dapat sa atong uh, paglakaw. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Doreen Maria Rosales of the Philippine Information Agency, Caraga. Still to come, the Interagency Task Force approved the proposal to increase ridership in public transportation. President Duterte is unlikely to order the use of satellite technology to improve internet connectivity. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tisyo at itapon sa basurahan. O galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Select areas in Metro Manila, Calabarzon, and Cebu are being eyed as zones for COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials. 
GOST Secretary Fortunato de la Peña said six barangays will come from Metro Manila, while Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, Quezon, and Cebu will have one barangay each participating in the trials. Tipinipili kasi lugar ay yung mataas ang incidence ng COVID-19. So yung mga barangay na naroroon o malapit doon, uh, usually it will require anywhere between 5 to 10 barangays uh, for a trial. At ang pipiliin nga ay yung mga lugar na mataas ang COVID-19 cases. Kung hindi kasya uh, doon sa napili mga barangay, maaari pang uh, uh, mag-overflow sa karating na, na barangay. Importante kasi na yung lugar na pipiliin ay uh, malapit doon sa mga lugar na mataas ang incidence o ang cases uh, dahil ating susubukan ng efficacy ng uh, bakuna. The IATF EID has approved the proposal to increase ridership in public transportation by reducing the physical distance between commuters. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugades said there is a need to safely optimize the carrying capacity of the various public transport modes as more workers are expected to return to their reopened workplaces. More businesses are also expected to resume operations that were stopped during the enforcement of strict quarantine measures. Physical distancing measure enforced inside public transport units is 0.75 meters between commuters starting Monday before it could be further optimized to up to 5 meters after two weeks and 0.3 meters after another two weeks. Strict health protocols is also being enforced to contain the spread of COVID-19. The ban on sea travel for locally stranded individuals from Bato Port in Sambuan, Cebu and Tampi Port in Amla Negros Oriental has been extended following a number of COVID-19 infections in the area. The Regional Interagency Task Force had noted that some LGUs in Negros Oriental allegedly refused to receive their returning LSIs from Cebu. Thus, many of them were stranded at the Bato Port, posing a potential risk to the transmission of the virus. The last trip for uh, LSIs from Bato to Tampi via the Maayo shipping line's barges was on August 12. The Samboan LGU said it was extending the closure of all its seaports, particularly the Debato port, until September 23. Only cargo trucks, essential goods, and authorized persons outside of residence were allowed to travel between the two ports. The Negros Oriental Provincial Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases is set to meet with mayors next week to discuss strategies in seeking the lifting of the ban. Residents of a town in Agusan del Norte avail of services from the government service caravan. Meanwhile, indigenous people's schools in Surigao del Norte receive modular learning materials. Here is our report. Over a thousand residents of Barangay Doña Telesfora, Tubay, Agusan del Norte benefited from the service and goods provided during the four-day service caravan from September 8 to 11. Residents receive basic services such as psychosocial support, local civil registration, prenatal checkup, free haircut and distribution of various fruit tree seeds as well as food packs. The caravan was organized by the local government through the Army's Retooled Community Support Program. The village was formerly identified as a communist rebel-influenced area. In Surigao del Norte, two schools for indigenous people received support from the Tabang Escuela project of the nonprofit organization Propelling Our Inherited Nation Through Our Youth Incorporated. IP pupils from the Tiltilan and Palilihan Elementary Schools in the town of Gigakit received bond papers and printer ink donated by IU Philippines and two gallons of isopropyl alcohol from Pointy SDN and the Army's 30th Infantry Battalion. The Tabang Escuela program aims to help schools that offer modular learning programs for their students amid the continuing threat of COVID-19. The project would also protect the children of the IPs and their communities from the influence of the Communist New People's Army. Meanwhile, Mindanao Development Authority Secretary Emmanuel Pinol has called for a debate on the policy which bans the export of mature coconuts. 
In a statement Thursday, Pinyol publicly challenged anybody who believes that the ban on the export of mature coconuts is beneficial to the coconut farmer and the industry as a whole. Pinyol earlier expressed reservations over the government's policy of not lifting the ban on the export of mature coconuts. However, he clarified that the challenge is being issued not to shame those who supported the law, but to show to the people that the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte believes in transparency. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte is not likely to issue an executive order which will allow internet service providers to set up networks using satellite technology. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the call of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry for Duterte to issue an EO on satellite access liberalization would need further study. Roque explained that signing the EO could infringe on the Congress's power to grant franchises. PCCI President Ambassador Benedicto Yuhuiko earlier said signing an EO on satellite access liberalization is the fastest way to allow internet services providers to build their network using satellite technology for internet connectivity. He said the proposed EO may take effect while bills to improve connectivity are pending at the legislative level. Duterte has urged his cabinet to employ drastic measures to shorten the process of securing permits for building telecommunications towers. In our business news, Globe Telecom on Thursday announced it had secured a total of 190 permits from 85 local government units in August to build cell sites in different parts of the country. In a statement, Globe said 37 of the permits were issued in record time by 17 LGUs. It attributed the faster issuance on Joint Memorandum Circular No. 01-2020 released in July that sought the streamlining of documents to reduce delays in the construction of common towers. Joel Agustin, Globe Senior Vice President for Program Delivery Network Technical Group, said he expects more support from LGUs in the future through the JMC, which aims to shorten the processing of tower requirements from an average of 200 days to only 16 days. He noted Globe's network rollout is further boosted after more than 40 LGUs removed the requirement to secure a permit from their respective Sangunian Bayan before the construction of a cell tower. Up next, the palace dismisses claims by a human rights group that drug-related killings increased during the pandemic, and hotels slashed their rates in a promo for frontliners and tourists. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri. At maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki. At kuskusin ng paikot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan ito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon ito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito.
Malacanang on Thursday shrugged off a human rights watchdog report that showed that drug-related killings in the country worsened as the country continues to grapple with COVID-19. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque declined to comment on the Human Rights Watch claim that the police killed 50% more people between April and July this year than they did in the previous four-month period. He said he could not simply accept the conclusions reached by the watchdog without reviewing the report. He, however, said it was usual for human rights groups to make noise about issues to be heard. Roque has repeatedly assured that the Duterte administration does not tolerate police abuse and other human rights violations. The HWR said it found 155 persons were killed in the past four months compared to only 103 persons killed from December 2019 to March 2020. Government data showed that more than 5,600 people were killed in anti-drug operations since July 2016. Malacanang says retired Army Major General Jovito Palparan has to stay in jail unless President Rodrigo Duterte decides to grant him pardon. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said Palparan was sentenced by a regional trial court after being proven that he violated the law. Roque said Palparan's freedom lies in Duterte's hands. Palparan has been serving his sentence at the state penitentiary in Muntinlupa City. He was convicted for the kidnapping and illegal detention of two University of the Philippines students in 2006. Earlier in a Facebook post, former Interior Secretary Rafael Alunan III suggested Palparan's release after Duterte granted absolute pardon to U.S. Marine Lands Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton. Alunan said Palparan should be released since he was doing his duty fighting enemies of the state. Pemberton was convicted of homicide on December 1, 2015 for the killing of transgender Jennifer Laude in a motel in Olongapo City on October 2014. The Supreme Court has returned to the lower courts a petition filed by several prisoners who alleged that they are among the elderly, sick, and pregnant inmates exposed to the danger of COVID-19. The High Court issued a decision on July 28 regarding the petition filed by suspected communist rebels seeking temporary liberty based on humanitarian grounds. It noted that the petitioners have been charged with offenses punishable by reclusion perpetua or up to 40 years imprisonment, which means they are not entitled to bail. Solicitor General Jose Calida in April asked the SC to dismiss a petition seeking to release the detained New People's Army rebels. Some of the petitioners are charged before the Manila Regional Trial Court Branch 32 with 15 counts of murder for their involvement in the Inopacan Massacre in 1992. 68 skeletal remains identified as victims of the CPP, NPA, NDF internal cleansing were discovered in Upapan Leyte in 1992. The Army has condemned anew the Communist New People's Army's use of child warriors. The 53rd Infantry Battalion said it discovered that many former NPA rebels who recently surrendered in Zamboanga del Sur were minors when they were recruited. Battalion Commander Lieutenant Colonel Joe R. Herrera described the NPA's recruitment and exploitation of minors as terroristic, inhuman, and clear violations of human rights. According to 53IB, the recruitment process either involved exploiting the children's misguided sense of nationalism and patriotism, enticing them with a ticket out of poverty, or both. Of the 13 former rebels who were recruited as minors, Four have already received their benefits under the government's Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program. The Japanese Coast Guard has seized its full-time search operations for the missing Gulf Livestock One and its crew members after days of finding no clues or new survivors. The Department of Foreign Affairs said the Coast Guard has found no trace of the ship since September 5. The DFA expressed its sympathies to the families and loved ones as they pray for the missing seafarers. The Panamanian registered firefighter was carrying cattle on its way to the Chinese port of Tangshan from New Zealand when it issued a distress signal off Amami Oshima Island in Kagoshima Prefecture on September 2nd. 
The crew includes 39 Filipinos, two New Zealanders, and two Australians. Only three Filipinos out of the 43 were found, but one of them later died. Reports said the ship capsized and sank after its engine shut down and was hit by a huge wave at the height of Typhoon Maysac. Dozens of hotels nationwide are slashing up to 70% on accommodation in the industry's first September online sale or SOS. The SOS, organized with the support of the Tourism Promotions Board, is a two-week online sale of 89 hotel accommodations and other offerings across the country to be held on September 15 to 30. The event is targeting corporate clients health workers, event organizers, and tourists who would be traveling once tourism resumes in their respective areas. The campaign offers options from 89 hotels and resorts across eight key destinations, including Manila, Boracay, and Palawan, among others. Some of the promos are valid for up to a year and even more, while the others even have no expiration on their validity. The vouchers, which are valid from October 1, 2020 through September 30, 2021, could be purchased at the HSMA website at www.hsma.org.ph. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. Malacanang is optimistic that the economy will recover after hitting rock bottom amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The Interagency Task Force approves the proposal to increase ridership in public transportation. The palace dismisses claims by a human rights group that drug-related killings increased during the pandemic. And hotels slashed their rates in a promo for frontliners and tourists. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day, stay safe, and happy weekend to all.